Ask any 10 IT pros about cloud, and you'll probably get 11 different answers, if not 12. But these days, building your own private cloud is something that's gone from marketing terminology to actual buttons you can click in an interface. Microsoft, in a very intelligent move with VMM 2012, put together a little button in the upper right-hand corner of the screen that said, Create Cloud. And although there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do first before you ever click that button, creating your very first private cloud with Hyper-V and VMM 2012 is something I think we're all very interested in. In this recent series I put together for CBT Nuggets on the 70-247 exam, I talk about how to create a private cloud. And here in this upcoming little micro nugget, I'm going to share with you how you can create your own system center private cloud. What are we, five, six nuggets into this thing and we finally get to click that create cloud button. Are you excited yet? I'm excited. Let's click the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our cloud, our cloud. And this is a cloud that we'll use later on for hosting all of these different automations that create virtual machines and create services and link all the services and VMs together. For our cloud, we have to identify first what resources we're going to plug into the cloud. And those resources are going to be, in this case, all of the hosts that exist in our host group. Now recall back when we were talking about clustering, right? So with a cluster, or with a cloud, I can make the cloud uh, comprised of a variety of resources from different Hyper-V hosts. Those hosts can be clustered. They don't necessarily need to be clustered. But as you can see here in our host group, we have three physical CPUs, a total memory of about eight gigs, and plenty of storage here for the virtual machines. When I choose next here, I can select the logical networks that I'm going to make available in that private cloud. This is this VM network that we created just a minute ago. Choose next again, and I can choose any load balancers that I want. At this point, I'm going to leave load balancers and also the VIP profiles out of the cloud because we'll add them a little later on when we start talking about some of these, again, these automations that make more sense in relation with NLB. I can identify the storage classifications that the cloud is going to make available. These are the classifications that I will ultimately make available to users who are self-serving their own services and virtual machines. These are the silver standard and the gold standard, where gold was SSD and silver was regular spinning drives. I also have to identify the library paths. So where am I going to be storing my VMs for this cloud? Just here in the root of the library, or have I created a specific location in the library where I want to actually store virtual machines? I'll just put it here to the root for this period so we can take a look at all the different options that are available in that library share. Are there additional read-only library shares that we want to make available? Right? Do these provide, for example, ISO files for, for operating systems or for applications or even virtual machines that we would clone from? So these library shares make it make available the resources that virtual machines and services would ultimately use. What kind of capacity do I want to set for this cloud is another important question. Now, in most of our situations, we're just simply going to use the entire amount of capacity that's associated with the host that we've collected together for this cloud. But we don't necessarily have to. We can create multiple concurrently running private clouds if we want, one that may have one half of the resources and the other that may have the other half of the resources. Commonly, this can be done for maybe multiple programs. If you have multiple programs or multiple lines of business that need to make use of the cloud, but you want to set hard limits on the amount of resources that they can use. If you do deselect un, uh, unlimited, then you've got to assign what the capacity is going to be for the virtual machines that will be, ma be making use of each individual cloud. The last item here is the uh, capability profiles. And we already took a look at these. These are the profiles that set those maximums and minimums for the different virtual machines that we'll be using atop this cloud. Now, this cloud is only going to support Hyper-V hosts, so I'm only going to make that capability profile available here in this cloud. If I wanted to later add in ESX servers, I could do so, but I would need to then also add in those capability profiles for the ESX servers as well. When I'm done, are you ready? We click Finish. And we will have gone about creating our first private cloud. Pretty exciting, huh? And again, I, I, it, it, it just tickles me that this entire notion has been re reduced down to something as simple as clicking a little button. Want to learn more? Check out cbtnuggets.com.